Hey, hey, Kiara Franchka here coming to you with a video. Today, it's actually a topic I never saw myself ever talk about, but I really felt I had to document this one because this is purely manifestation. It's something, now manifestation is something I've been taking more seriously recently, and I know that I've manifested almost unconsciously uh, other things in my life like speaking on stage hitting leaderboards um, money travel you know um, like I've done things at my age that most people who are at the same age as me just wish they could do so I really had to document this one because this was just manifestation hitting me right in my face and I know that this was a sign from the universe so that I pay attention more on what I manifest and what to visualize on so that I can make my other dreams come true. Yeah, so this one's gonna be a pretty interesting one. It's on how I manifested my, my dream home in Madrid. I'm not there yet. I move in like in um, less than two weeks now, but this is a temporary flat I'm right in the city center and I can't wait to leave. Uh, the flat's beautiful, but the city center here is crazy in the weekends and I'm, I'm kind of, um, a bit too mature for my age I should say and I'm just looking forward to moving out it's still a busy area because I, I need energy like people energy people's energy and here in Spain the energy is amazing because the people are so happy but I need something a bit more toned down now before I dive in and explain how I manifested my dream home here in Madrid um, just subscribe below make sure that you stay up to date with my content I'm always posting value um, but also the notification bell so that you make sure you never miss out on my content. That way, every time I post something, you get it. Okay, so how did I manifest my, my dream home here in Madrid? So, it's goes, so basically, this goes back to the 1st January. Okay, that's when I came to Madrid. I moved on the 1st January. My best friend and his husband, they live here. Um, and I stayed with them about four or five weeks they said you guys stay with us you know they were lovely they were really nice to me uh, the only issue was that they lived on the outskirts of the city so even though it was still Madrid it was it's really far away so every time I had to come to see a flat or if I needed to come to the city center I would just give up right <laughs> I mean I would do it but I used to be like already exhausted by the time I came to see the flat because I'm not a person that likes to commute a lot. That's why I like to stay in the city center, anywhere I am. Like, even when I lived in Berlin, I was, like, on the most, like, the area I knew I would hang out in the most. I was, like, there in the middle of it. <laughs> so, I'm a person that loves convenience. I need to see restaurants and shops and people as soon as I walk out the door. Um, so, so, that's me. <laughs> I literally live off feeding people's energy. And um, anyway, so it was hard for me uh, being up there and it was just not working well on my energy. So my aura was getting like, you could feel that I was getting tired, exhausted, stressed. Like I felt like I was living in a cloud and I knew it was just not going to happen from up there. So even though I was doing my part and coming, um, you know, every time I was able to do a flag viewing, um, it's just, I just mentally, I was not there so if and I know that if my well-being is not intact then I'm just not going to be able to manifest whatever it is I want in my life and even though there were places that I liked you know um, I just wasn't feeling it it was weird because I saw like there were two places that I could have easily moved into the only problem was um, they weren't exactly what I wanted um, they were unfurnished like completely unfurnished uh, so I would have to start completely from scratch, except for, you know, like, appliances and things like that. So at least there was that, but I would have had to get the bed and sofa, all this. And it wasn't really ideal for me. Um, so, but, with, but I was being open, you know. So um, there were two places that I really liked. I mean, but now that I look back, it's weird. I just know that they were not meant to be. <laughs> they were really not meant to be, especially now that I, I have this one. Anyhow, the other problem was um, I had to go to agencies. Now, 
the problem here in Madrid is, if, especially if you're a foreigner and you don't work here, it all works against you. Okay, the way their system is set up is it's just not set up and designed in a way to work in my favor. So they they would have at least needed me to work three months here, pay taxes here, and all this. So I already had that issue, but I mean there was we had a loophole. My friend was willing to sign the contract with me because he had been working here for three months already. So he's like, you know, I can help you out. So it was really nice from his part. However. If you know, like for those of you that have watched me and my journey in the last two, three years, you know that that is just something I would hate. And not because it has anything to do with my friend. I actually really appreciate what he was doing with me and I took his offer up. But I just, not, I am not the person to depend on anyone for anything. Like I fill all the shoes for any, any possible role that is needed in my life because I do everything alone. I've traveled alone. I've just done it all alone, you know, and I have survived you know, here, I'm alive. Um, like at the age of 21, I was traveling Australia um, by myself. Like I just went there. I, I mean, I had, a, I had a friend there, but I mean, and then I, I made other friends and went back, like backpacking in the outback. We went to Melbourne, I had another friend, but then I, I just went off, you know, to New Zealand and, and just doing this crazy stuff. So I was born to be a survivor and to do it all alone. Um, so anyhow, I, I was learning how to, to, to accept help here in Madrid and, and, um, you know, I said, if I find a flat, I like to a real estate agent, then so be it. Finding an entire place, um, not to an agent is, is just difficult. If you're looking to have roommates, then it's easy, but unfortunately an entire flat, then you need, you know, I had to go to the agent and I needed my friend's help. Anyhow, so five weeks, I cannot count the places I looked at. Like I said, mentally, I was just not there. So anyhow, I had to go, um, I had to head back home to Malta. I had to do a photo shoot. And then right after I had to go to Paris, I was really not up for any of this because I'm telling you, I've traveled so much. I'm tired of planes. Like I don't want to see planes. I mean, I was cool to go back to Malta because I was able to see my family. I love spending time with them. They're my world and, you know, it was good to go back home, see them at least. I did the shoot, which I needed for my branding. So for me, it was worth the trip. I'm very happy with the outcome of the shoot, even though I was just not there. I'm telling you, I was eating, like imagine before a shoot eating crap. Like I eat healthy. My, like I spent the whole year eating well and, and I was always as slim as ever. And now I had this emotional eating disorder because of all the stress of the move. You know, I was in a new city, I was looking for a place, but I wasn't settled, so I was just eating, eating, eating before this photo shoot, days before. And somehow, the, shoot, the pictures came out, like, they couldn't be any better. <laughs> Seriously, I was so surprised. I was like, oh my goodness. Anyhow, so, um, so I went to Paris, my best friend flew in from New Zealand, and she was like, I'm going to be in Paris, she's like, come see me. So. You know, obviously I hadn't seen her for a few weeks and I didn't know when I'll ever see her again. So she was in Europe and I was like, for me to go to New Zealand was not an option. So I was like, okay, I'll just take up Paris. So I went to see her for the weekend. I was so tired. By the time I got there, I was literally like drained. It was like someone sucked out all energy out of me. So Paris passed and I said, okay, I'm going back to Madrid, but I'm not going to my friend's place because I'm used to being alone. So I needed my space and I wanted to give them their space back. Um, and I was like, I'm going to have my own temporary place and I'm going to just deal with it until, you know, I, I, I settle in and find a place. So I moved back and when I moved back, I, <laughs> so anyhow, you know, I, I don't know, I was just drawing. I think I had this bad energy attached to me, but as soon as I, I, I flew in, there were issues, like they lost my luggage. So I came to my flat. I had nothing. All my other stuff was in the outskirts where my friends live, which is far away. So, um, you know, it was already nighttime by the time I came. So, and they, and they guaranteed me that I will have my luggage the next morning. And yes, as you're probably assuming, the luggage did not arrive. Can't have a good ending right away, right? <laughs> so luggage doesn't arrive. Luckily, some guy I met in Madrid, like second week here, he offered to call for me like he checked on me and I was telling him what happened and he's like just give me the number let me deal with it because um you know even though it was a number for lost luggage somehow 
there seemed no one that could help me in English. You know, they either drop the line when they say they're going to transfer or they just say no one's there to speak to me in English. It was for I'm thinking it was a nightmare. So um, he calls and he follows up and he's like, you need to wait, you need to wait. He's like, wait till 11 at night. I'm like, 11 at night. They said, I want by one, I'll have it. Anyhow, I wait till 11 at night like a dirty cat at the window because I'm in the same clothes. My hair's dirty. I have nothing. Like, I don't have my hair stuff with me. I don't have any makeup. And anyhow, so he called again, like, a number of times. And he called again at 11 to say, okay, she's waited till 11. Where's her luggage? They said, oh, we, we came at 12. I was here. There was nobody at the door at 12. So where else could I go? I have nothing with me. Like, I needed my stuff. Obviously, I'm going to wait around for my stuff. So anyhow, they were calling me a liar. That's okay. They said, she'll have it the next morning. Next morning. Um, I'm waiting like again, like a dirty cat at the window. I'm dirtier this time. <laughs> I was able to shower, but in the same clothes, you feel dirty, especially if you traveled with them, right? So, anyhow, I'm waiting. Nothing happens. My friend just calls without even telling me because he knew that I would tell him if I had my luggage. So he calls, he's like, where is her luggage? This girl's been waiting. She needs her stuff. Oh, we left it at the airport. So... So I ran to the airport, completely messy. Like I, I was embarrassed to look at people. Like I, I was feeling dirty. I was, wasn't comfortable <laughs> with, with, without any makeup or, or clean hair. So I go to the airport. Um, anyhow, 45 minutes later, I get my luggage. I couldn't believe it. Like as soon as I saw my luggage, I just couldn't believe it. So I thank my friend, come home, and anyhow, I'm here. <laughs> so my life goes on, but. Obviously, I need to start looking for an apartment. And I just had zero desire to start looking. And I said, you know what? I even told my mom, I'm not going to start looking. I just, I, my head is just not here. I said, I feel like I'm in a cloud. I feel like my well-being is just deteriorated. I'm going downhill. I was going to the gym. I was, I was even intermittent fasting and trying to eat well. And I was like, it's just not happening. Um, I just don't feel like, I just, I don't feel it is the time. I don't feel I should be looking. And I... I even sat down and I was like, I'm so tired. I was like, I moved into a new city. I've been moving around like a gypsy. Then this whole lost luggage deal. I was like, universe. I was just really, I, I looked up. I was like, universe. I was like, I feel the city is rejecting me. Do you even want me here? I said, you know what? If I'm meant to be here, like if, if you really want me to be here, I just, I just want to flat literally just right on my lap. Like, can you do that for me? I want a flat, literally to fall on my lap. Like, not physically, but just give me a flat. Like, if I'm meant to be here, despite the fact that there's all these real estate agency problems, the fact that I don't work here, I don't pay tax here, and I don't want to do it without, I don't want to do it with my friend signing because I just, I'm too independent for someone to help me out with the stuff, you know? Because it's like a guarantee for him, you know, he's guaranteeing me in a way. So I was like, I don't want to do, put this pressure on someone else, even though my friend was okay with it. Um, and I just said, just give me a place. And I didn't look at all. It was weird. Like, I just decided not to fight it. I was like, if I'm meant to be here, it's just going to come. So I decided to continue, like, working because working gave me my dignity back so to speak made me feel human again i feel it made me feel alive again so i'm um, working away and you know trying to get back my focus hasn't been easy um it's like you know i just need to get so much clarity i honestly feel i need to detox and do a juice cleanse for about five to seven days just to clear my head and get my focus back and um anyhow so i'm i'm just working away letting life go by a week and a half later, I'm starting to think maybe I should start taking some action with the flat thing because I don't really think a flat is just going to fall on my lap. Believe it or not, my friend calls me, my best friend who wanted to sign for me, hyped them, and he's like, Kiara, he's like, I think we found your flat. I was like, what? And I, by the time, I was so like over it. Like, like, if you told me, I don't know, the, the dream flat, everything that I wrote down that I wanted in a flat, I was just like so like done by then he's like go see it and he sent me pictures i barely looked at them i mean the kitchen looked nice i was like yeah maybe there's potential and i was like 
I was like, should I go? And I was like, yeah, I should go. I should go. I went with an open mind, but I really had this like, this whatever vibe coming out of me. I walk in, the owners are there and they make her super polite and sweet. All right now, owners here are not going to be really nice to you when they rent their places out to you because of all the rules that they have and things that have happened. Um, also, you have to understand there was a crisis in Madrid, so there's all this like, um, like you you might not be very lucky with the owners you get. They might not be the nicest owners to you, and not because it's a Spanish thing. Trust me, it's got nothing to do with that. Because Spanish people, I love them, I adore them, and I really want to be around them. But with real estate, it's a completely different ball game. And it's because of how the system is set in place. So anyhow, these owners are amazing. Like, they're so sweet. And I was like, okay, that's good. Uh, as soon as I walked in, I wasn't crazy about the furniture. But I was like, keep an open mind here. The flooring was beautiful. There were windows. Unfortunately, it was its interior. But I was like, that's something I can fix. Because I, I, I dreamed of having a lighting kit and creating my own little studio in the house. So I was like... You know what? As soon as I walked in, I said, and I told them, oh, is there's a much natural light, right? And they were very honest. And like they were like, no. So like, if you need natural light, maybe this is not your place. But I was like, I can fix that with a lighting kit because sometimes I want to do videos at night and I have no natural light. So um, you know, I was like, that's something I can I can deal with easily, you know. And also, you can't be picky in my view because. Um, it's just there are little there are just a few places for long term rent. The rest is all Airbnb. Like it's a huge issue. Uh, rent is going up like crazy because it's like Madrid is becoming the new London. So everyone wants to come and move here. So the 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 options are very limited. So I was keeping an open mind the whole time. Now the three biggest requirements for me were kitchen, bathroom, and the area. Kitchen was a dream. It was like, there's nothing I want to touch in the kitchen as it is. Like, I, and I always dreamed to have um, an island cooker instead of the island cooker. And the bathroom, exactly how I asked. Because I hate these baths where they have the shower curtains. Yeah, I don't do that. And it was glass door, exactly like I wanted. Big, and I was a big mirror. I was like, okay, so this is exactly what I need. Um, walked in the room. So the wardrobe was exactly like, it was very close to what I had in mind. I wasn't crazy about the headboard or the bedside tables. Um, there was a second room, which was perfect. So I said, if my parents come, they can take my room and I can take the second room. Um, and the second room was cool. Like, I didn't even really need the second room. Like, I wasn't really, I was really okay with without having the second room. It was within my budget as well. And um, there were a couple of things that I wasn't too crazy about, but... I was like, I can work with this as long as I've got the kitchen, the bathroom, um, space to make my own little studio. Um, there was a second room where I could store stuff that maybe I don't want, in the, in the, like that I didn't want in the living room, I could put in there. Um, and the area is one of the best you could ever live in in Madrid. It's like not a market, like I love markets. Like I love markets and there was one right next to my house. There is a train station next to like a station next to my house, um, and I live off the metro. And uh, but the area was perfect. As soon as I walked out, I was like, "This is exactly what I need. This is the energy I want to feel when I walk out of the house." So I was like, "I think this is it. It's just it just felt right." Like again, my energy was it just couldn't hit me right away because I had that whatever energy, like oh, whatever. But when I mean, we spoke, the owners love me and they're like, we don't need, um, you know, they agreed with me not to have all these documents the real estate agents asked for. They just wanted a few security checks, which I was able to provide easily, which I had already. And anyhow, two days later, they're like, you know, I send them everything they asked for. They had a couple of other visitors and they said, the flight is yours. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, it was, it's really, it's still, it was, it's still something I'm digesting, by the way. It's, it's Thursday. Anyhow, so, um, I sent my deposit to secure the flat. And then he was like, oh, by the way, are there, any, is there anything in the flat you don't want? Do you want us to remove? Because I mentioned saying I want to change the curtains. And I was like, well, now that you mention it, yes. And I was like, 
this, this, this. And they're like, okay. And what about the headboard? Like, I was like, that comes off? I was like, oh my God, this platform, it gets better. It's got, I can just mold it into exactly what I want. Like, I have the main things, like the kitchen, the bathroom, uh, the sofa. I love, I just want to put like a nice barrier to hover over it. Um, and then there's a place where I can do my little studio now because they're probably going to remove the furniture that I won't want. And this place is just only getting better. So the universe really listened to me. It wasn't specifically what I wanted, but the universe definitely listened to my priorities, which were bathroom, kitchen, and area, and owners. <laughs> okay, I have to mention this because honestly, if you, don't, if you have shitty owners here in Madrid, it can be helpful for you. So uh, I was just happy with the fact that not only did I get most of what I want, but it only seems to be getting better. And when you think about the situation in Madrid, getting a long-term flat, again, it's really like Spanish complaint. Imagine a foreigner, okay? Spanish complaint. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, I, I just, you know, after seeing all those flats and the fact that I didn't do anything to find this one, I'm just... So, honestly, guys, um, I just want to tell you guys, this was definitely my because you don't just sit down and find a place. Not not in this city. Not in this city. Trust me. Um, so I really feel that I manifested what I wanted. That the universe listened to me, and I think is the way is the the you know I think it's just the way uh, the universe has its way of telling me. Listen, this is not just with the house, but I um I have very I'm very specific now on what I want in my life. Um, I no longer want to travel like a mad girl and. And, you know, I, I will probably document more in the future what I ask for. And I've been practicing manifestation more. I'm watching more videos, getting more in tune with frequencies and things like this. And I actually did an exercise today and it worked. And I was so freaked out. I'm not kidding you guys. And I'll just tell you briefly. I won't go into detail. But I actually manifested a specific person to send me a text message. I just tried it and... As soon as I saw, I did what I did was I did the exercise. I visualized and I was, you know, working on. I was thanking the universe and and um, I was um, actually visualizing that I already had this specific message from this specific person. And all of a sudden, I put my phone down, and then a message comes through. I swear, and I was, I was like, no way! Like this is this just did not just happen here. I was like, so guys, um. I just realized I've went on for a lot of, I, I don't know, I, I split this up, but it's definitely been almost a half an hour. So I'm going to stop right here. But what I'm trying to say is if you're looking for your dream home, listen to my experience and notice a pattern where I stopped fighting it. I had faith and I just trust the universe and you guys can do the same. All right. And you know, you can really get what you want in life. This just doesn't apply to, to a home. This applies to finding a soulmate. It applies to finding specific friends in your life that are more like you or achieving certain desires, uh, maybe getting money. And uh, I can tell you guys, if you visualize... And so I'm just going to stop this right here. Uh, but with all that being said, please leave your comments below. Maybe you had a similar experience. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe to my channel because I will be documenting my journey. And with all that being said, you guys make it a great day. I will see you on